today I just wanted to talk a little bit about a, an exciting event coming up, it, which is the Médecins Sans Frontières MSF Scientific Day, which is on the, the 25th of May. I kind of think uh, about a couple of examples, and I remember what it was like when I, I first went with um, MSF, and, and I was working in Thailand uh, in a refugee camp in the 90s, and uh, we had an outbreak of cholera. Now, I'd, I'd, I'd learnt about cholera as a medical student, but it was the first time I, I saw it. And, and actually, I was, I was pretty fortunate. I, were, I had a, an experienced doctor there who was able to, you know, guide me through the, how to set up a cholera treatment centre. And, and I was able to provide pretty simple, basic treatment for a life-threatening illness and save a lot of lives. But I remember coming away and thinking, well, is that all there is to it? You know, the, we had some patients die. I remember an, an older patient dying and, and thinking, what could I have done better? Could I have saved that person's life? Fast forward a few years and 2008, there's an outbreak of cholera in Zimbabwe. 100,000 patients getting cholera and MSF uh, was there and treated 65,000 cases. Funnily enough, so, some of the doctors in the field were asking the same questions. Are the guidelines we have enough? Because we're still seeing pa people die. We saved a lot of lives, but what about those people who died? Could we have saved their lives? And, and so I, I think a couple of years ago at the MSF Scientific Day of a, some research presented by Kate Alberti from um, MSF in, in the Paris office, and, and she did an evaluation during this outbreak and, and actually there were a number of lessons that came out of that, simple lessons about how perhaps research that had been done by some other organisations could be incorporated into our guidelines and improve response. How the, um, the current guidelines were, were really good at dealing with refugee camp situations but they didn't give clear guidance on what to do in rural settings where, where doctors faced um, patients spread over a much wider area and it was much harder to set up a good response. So a, a simple field evaluation was able to give some recommendations on how we could improve our guidelines and hopefully equip doctors in the future to do a better response. Another problem that we see in a lot of our programs is, is how to treat um, HIV and, and provide antiretroviral therapy, which is a, a life-saving treatment. One of the problems that we see uh, commonly in, in many of our programs in Africa is that there are so many people who, who are actually uh, infected with HIV and as we've uh, successfully scaled up programs we end up with people on uh, treatment that is lifelong and so there is an ever-growing number of patients um, in our clinics and, and people are having to come to the clinics every one or two months to pick up their medications and that's that's a, a big impact on people's lives who often live, live quite away from the clinics. So I, I think of some uh, preliminary research that was presented by Tom DeCru and, and authors a, a couple of years ago where in Mozambique they, they thought about this problem and and the impact that it had on, on patients lives and and so they, they spoke with people and they actually came up with this idea of forming community antiretroviral groups where groups of patients get together and they actually help support each other and they're able to take turns in picking up the medications for each of uh, for the whole group and when we looked at the preliminary results that were presented, we found that people were actually able to adhere to their medications. They were ab able to stay in treatment um, uh, much better than, than what we'd been previously seeing. So this was really exciting preliminary research and, and that's led on to, to further research which could have a huge impact for how to more effectively bring treatment to, to people in, in Africa who have HIV and bring it in a way that maybe is actually preferred um, by, by patients and communities, which I think is really exciting. So for me, Scientific Day is, is a chance really to, to get a snapshot of some of the, the problems, the health problems that are facing many communities and a snapshot of what are the, what are the dilemmas that that medical staff are facing in these programs and then what are the questions they have and, and what's some of the evidence that we have to s answer those questions. Really in this day and age there it's unacceptable that people are still dying from cholera 
and we can do much better. We, we have an obligation to our patients to use our resources um, to the maximum. This event's actually going to be online, so there's the chance for people to watch the talks as they're happening online, um, and the events will be on the, the website. So, Scientific Day, May 25th, be there.